We address God as the God of our fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the great, strong, and awesome God, the exalted God who causes Gomel Chasadim Tovim, which is translated in the Lubavitch Siddur as gives abundant kindnesses. And that's an incorrect translation. And there is no real good translation in any of the Sidurim that I've had. So I want to tell you what I think it means. The first the question, the quote. Gomel Chasadim Tovim. He pays or delivers Chasadim or kindnesses, Tovim that are good. Aren't kindnesses by definition good? Why do we have to say chasadim tovim, good kindnesses? So I'll tell you something that I just saw on the internet, and it was publicized in all of Chabad.org, but I'm not sure that it actually took place. But the concept behind it, I am 100% certain, existed. There was this former soldier who fought in World War II and was a liberator of one of these terrible camps where Jews were murdered, starved to death, brutalized, and the survivors, one in 100, one in 50, one in 500, the survivors were emaciated. And so the CEO, the CO, the commanding officer of the particular military group called a meeting of all of his men and said, tomorrow we're going to enter in the camp that we're in front of. What you're about to see will shock you and hurt you for the rest of your life. You will never believe such misery could possibly take place, such brutality such inhumanity could have possibly taken place in the 20th century. You will see it with your own eyes. But I want to warn you, there are hundreds if not thousands of survivors there among the tens of thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of dead bodies. Those survivors will ask you for food. Please, don't you dare feed them. If you give them the chocolate bar that you have, you'll kill them. Only our cooks are trained as to what kind of food their condition is able to absorb. So please remember, tomorrow, no food. And you have to tell them you have no food for them. So this soldier, Jewish young man, went in, and sure enough, the smell and the sights, the sights of the emaciated bodies strewn around in the thousands, maybe the tens of thousands, shocked him to his core. And out of the barracks emerged a young boy, might have been 14 or 15 years old, skinny as a rail, in a drab, striped can't even call it a garment, a uniform, prison uniform. And he said, give me, to essen. give me something to eat, please. And the soldier's heart went out to him, and he says, I'm sorry, he said in Yiddish, in a broken Yiddish, Chob nishvos segeben tzir tzessen, aber ken fa de ton noch ein sach, ich ken da rumnehmen, I can take you and embrace you. I can give you a hug. And the child, a young boy, who hadn't had the love of another human being, expressed to him for five years, opened himself up, and the soldier and the surviving boy embraced. And soon, seeing this, suddenly there was a line of survivors who instead of looking for food 
were looking for the warm embrace of a human being, a friend. And hundreds of soldiers and survivors shared that moment, the first moment of freedom and love and kindness that these people had tasted in years. It wasn't the food that they were starving for. Besides the food, it was the human love, the human kindness. I don't know if the story took place. It could have. It's likely that it could have. I will tell you, however, that in 1971, I was working in Brooklyn. A man came to the base Machna Yisrael where I worked on president in Kingston and told me the following story. He lived or still lives in Pittsburgh and he was a survivor of one of the camps. He says, you see me now. I'm, I weigh about 180 pounds. I was 90 pounds when the war ended and I could not walk. That's how bad it was. And as soon as the Germans left the camp, the inmates ran to the kitchen and they went to the barrels of food where there was honey where there was herring where there was flour at least something to eat and most of them died right there in the barrel for their bodies could not take they hadn't had normal food in years their body were not ready, their bodies were not ready to absorb the food. I, he said, couldn't walk. I tried dragging myself across the floor and then I collapsed, not being able to get to the kitchen. You can understand my frustration. But that saved my life, he said, as you can see. And so, my friends, this is the meaning of the prayer that we extol God with. Gomel bestows chasadim tovim, kindnesses that are good, kindnesses that are effective, kindnesses that we can absorb. For you see, food to a hungry person is necessary, but too much or the wrong kind of food could lead to that person's death. And so even where you have kindnesses, you must also have that it should be tovim, they should be good. And so that's what we ask of God all the time. You bestow or give chasadim tovim, good and effective and useful kindnesses not kindnesses that we can't use or can't absorb. And so my wish for you this year, for all of us, is that we should be the beneficiaries, the recipients of chasadim tovim, good and effective kindnesses, the kind of kindnesses that are good for us and useful for us. May those who need monetary success be successful, but in a way that they can use it and enjoy it and be able to share with others on their own, by their own decisions, not imposed by government. For kindness that is imposed by government is not kindness. And it winds up being not chasadim tovim. It winds up becoming inefficient ill-used and beneficial only to the bureaucrat who administers it. And so my prayer is that God make the country successful so we need not receive from the largesse of government. We should be able to be successful on our own and healthy on our own and have pleasure from children on our own. Chasadim tovim for you for all of us. Have a good year.